Congresswoman Lee Stefanik, who is also the chair of the House Republican Com Conference. Thank you for joining us, Congresswoman. What is your current sense with this war? Could it be over soon, or should we be prepared for a longer conflict? Well, first, the United States of America stands strongly with the people of Ukraine. And God bless Zelensky for the leadership he has shown throughout this horrific, horrific war, the most significant war since the end of World War II. Uh, the images you just showed, Trey, on your show, they are devastating. They are examples of genocide and the heinousness of truly an authoritarian war criminal in Vladimir Putin. The United States needs to do everything we absolutely can to provide ammunition, to provide anti tank to provide anti-aircraft, anti-ship uh, weapons for the Ukraine, Ukrainians so that they are able to defend and continue this fight for their sovereignty, for their nation. But make no mistake, Vladimir Putin is a war criminal, and there will be accountability on the global stage. You mentioned two things I want to follow up on. You're on House Armed Services. You're also on intelligence. I'm going to ask you about Putin in a second, but you listed some weaponry that Ukraine would benefit from. Is there a consensus among your colleagues, particularly on House Armed Services, that more can or should be done to help the Ukrainian military? Absolutely. So uh, I joined with fellow House Republicans advocating for providing very specific munitions prior to any invasion as a form of deterrence. Unfortunately, President Biden did not make that decision, and they only started after the invasion to start uh, getting weapons, munitions, which is a lot more difficult when there is war happening in a country and it's ineffective. It was, in fact, it didn't work as a deterrent uh, because the invasion had already started at that point. When it comes to what the Ukrainians need now, uh, uh, Zelensky was very clear in his address to the Congress, to both the House and the Senate, specifically the United States signing off on the transferring of MiGs, specifically the S-300 when it comes to anti-aircraft. Uh, and now we have the U.K. leading when it comes to anti-ship weapons. Uh, the United States needs to also support the anti-ship weapons transfer uh, and not stand in the way. Uh, and this is, you know, this takes leadership. This takes global leadership. The United States should be out front in standing strong with our partner, uh, a free Ukraine. All right, Elise, I have pulled from your House Armed Services uh, membership. Now I'm going to pull from your House Intelligence Committee service. Is there a consensus or, or have we learned anything about, about Putin and his motivations and his goal as this war has progressed? Well, without getting into any of the classified material, there have been multiple national security advisors who have said on the record that this is a very desperate Putin. This is a different Putin, in the words of Secretary Rice. Now, Putin has always been an authoritarian, uh, but this is a level of genocide that really the world has not seen. Uh, I'm deeply, deeply concerned that you're dealing with a very unstable Vladimir Putin. Uh, and certainly, Vladimir Putin only looks to strength. And I think that was one of the big mistakes that Joe Biden made in terms of giving away the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, giving a slap on the wrist when it was Russian backed cyber attacks and U.S. infrastructure. So the U.S. needed to act earlier in providing weapons and munitions, and we need to make sure that we're standing strong with Ukrainians. The other assessment that I think was wrong is there, I, I don't think people realize the Ukrainians had such a significant will to fight. I always believed that. I've been to Ukraine, I've seen how proud they are of their country, and boy, oh boy, did they exceed expectations. They are fighting with their lives, unfortunately, but they are fighting for their nation. Lisa, I want to come closer to home. What are your constituents, what are you hearing from your constituents about the state of our economy and this economic malaise and inflation and gas prices? I mean, I know you go to your district, you spend a ton of time there, you travel it. What are you hearing? Uh, the number one issue I'm hearing from my constituents economically is the inflation. It is crushing hardworking families. It is crushing seniors. I represent so many seniors who are on very limited incomes. So that increase in groceries every single week, uh, almost $300 a month, that is absolutely crushing. That is essentially a tax on every American. In addition, energy costs. Uh, we have seen the war on American energy independence under Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi's unfortunately failed leadership. But when you represent a rural district like mine in the north country of New York, when it's not rare for an individual to commute an hour each way to work every day, that is crushing economically. It's crushing to balance your family's budget. So we need to make sure that we're reining in this reckless spending and not continuing the tax and spend policies 
out of both Albany and Washington, D.C., that are hurting families. That's the number one issue I hear from my constituents about. Elise Stefani, thank you for spanning the globe and talking about war and then coming home and talking about gas prices with me. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Trey. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.